Based in San Francisco, California, Scale AI has raised over $600 million from top VCs like Excel, Founders Fund, Index Ventures, and has a valuation of over $7 billion. This valuation made its co-founder and CEO, Alexander Wang, the youngest self-made billionaire at 24 years old back in 2021. Today's AI technology doesn't really think for itself. Rather, it produces outputs and answers based on data it's been trained on. This means that it's all about the training model and the data that's fed into it. This is where a company like Scale AI comes in. Scale is a data labeling and annotation platform that helps companies develop AI and machine learning models. It recently garnered a lot of attention and is seen as one of the hottest tech startups today. But what exactly does Scale do? In this episode, we'll talk about how Scale AI actually works, the shady dark side of the company, and what the future holds for AI. Here we go. To understand Scale AI, we have to wind the clocks back to 2016 when the company was founded. Scale is a YC company that was part of its spring 2016 batch and was started by Lucy Guo and Alexander Wang, both geniuses in their own rights. Lucy was 21 years old at the time and had already worked at Meta, which was Facebook back then, Quora, and Snapchat before starting the company. She was a Carnegie Mellon University dropout and a Teal Fellow. For those of you that don't know, the Teal Fellowship is a prestigious two-year program that provides $100,000 to young people who want to build new things instead of sitting in a classroom. To receive the fellowship, students must be younger than 22 years old and must drop out of college. It was started by tech billionaire Peter Thiel and is extremely competitive with an acceptance rate of just 0.1%. About 20 to 25 fellows are selected annually through a competitive annual process. Okay, back to scale. Alexander Wang was 19 at the time and dropped out of MIT to start the company. What's crazy is that while he was just a high schooler, he was already a tech lead at Quora, working on the infrastructure team. Quora back then was known for having top-notch product, design, and engineering teams. It was here where Lucy and Alex met and began their entrepreneurial journey together. But it would soon end a few years later when Lucy decided to leave the company. More on this in a moment. Many people don't know this, but Scale actually didn't start off as a data platform for AI, or at least not directly. It was a simple API for human tasks. In fact, its name and domain name weren't even Scale AI. It was Scale API. For those of you that don't know, API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's a type of software that allows two or more computer programs to communicate with each other. For example, the weather app on your phone communicates with the Weather Bureau's software system to be able to show you weather updates on your phone. Scale provided an on-demand fleet of human laborers to perform tasks that couldn't be done by algorithms, all accessible by one line of code. Companies could get tasks done by these workers for cases like content moderation, data extraction, and scheduling appointments. As Scale signed more clients to its business, it quickly found a strong use case in artificial intelligence and became a viable solution to a problem plaguing self-driving car companies. These companies had millions of miles of on-the-road driving footage to train their autonomous vehicle AI, but not nearly enough people to review and label it. Scale could fill that gap. It soon signed big clients in the automotive industry like Toyota, Honda, Waymo, and Cruise. The founders Lucy and Alex had many arguments about the direction they wanted to take the company. In 2018, Lucy decided to leave the company due to differences in product vision and its roadmap. Since then, she started her own VC firm back in capital and launched her own software startup called Passes focused on the creator economy. Both Lucy and Alex have farther declined to speak any more about their split. Scale dropped API from its domain name and changed its legal business name to Scale AI. What it does now is provide a data labeling and annotation platform to help companies turn their raw data into high quality training data 
for the development of their own AI applications. Scale does this by combining machine learning powered pre-labeling and active tooling with varying levels and types of human review. Alex sees his company as the picks and shovels in today's AI gold rush. Scale has four core products. The first product is called Scale Data Engine, which helps machine learning teams build AI. With this, teams collect, curate, and annotate data, they train models, and evaluate them. Self-driving car startup Neuro uses this to help it identify infrequent but meaningful scenarios with its training data. For example, its data included hundreds of thousands of images of pedestrians in unusual postures, various types of animals, and other types of vehicles. This is essential for safe autonomy. The next two products allow machine learning teams to apply AI to their company's applications. We're proud to introduce um, our two new generative AI platforms, Scale Donovan and Scale EGP. Generative AI is truly the tech innovation of this generation. I know that this technology will be as impactful as the internet. Um, it's poised to disrupt fundamental enterprise business models and industries across financial services, media, insurance, retail, and more. Uh, we'll be investing billions of dollars into this technology to adapt to the changes. Scale Generative AI Platform is for enterprises. This enables teams to compare, test, and deploy foundation models from companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. They can then fine tune the base models with their own enterprise data and Scale's data engine, which allows them to build, compare, and securely deploy their own applications, accelerating their AI developments. Scale Donovan is for the US government and defense to make smarter decisions. Donovan ingests defense data such as emails, intelligence reports, and satellite imagery. It understands and organizes organizes this data to make it interactable, which allows operators and analysts to ask it questions in a chat interface that results in a course of action or summary report provided by Donovan. It rapidly analyzed over 2,000 square kilometers of Ukraine, identifying over 370,000 structures in which it provided data directly to the government. Scale's last product is called Scale Spellbook, which enables developers to build, compare, and deploy their own large language model apps. Scale has over 600 employees and works with organizations across various industries. Organizations like Meta, Adept, Microsoft, Instacart, Fox, Toyota, Etsy, the U.S. Army, and the U.S. Air Force. Its robust data platform and big clientele have propelled it to generate $250 million in revenue in 2022 at a time when many AI startups weren't yet making a cent. All of this sounds great for scale. However, you don't get to a billion dollar company without some shady things happening behind the scenes. Scale faced a critical problem in its business. Ironically, given its name, the more it scaled, the harder it became to keep up with the demand for human labor. The company first turned to outsourcing agencies to fill gaps, but costs quickly spiraled up. Gross margins, which hovered around 65% in early 2018, approached a mere 30% by 2019. This is where Remote Tasks comes in. Remote Tasks is Scale's in-house outsourcing agency. Scale set up dozens of facilities in lower cost of living areas like Southeast Asia and Africa to train thousands of data labelers. In fact, Scale actually employs over 240,000 labelers. This helped the company's margins bounce back to a healthy percentage. However, these facilities faced poor working conditions and many labelers were paid less than $1 an hour. Scale has been careful to position Remote Tasks as a separate brand. Its website makes no mention of Remote Tasks and vice versa. Employees say this was to make the company's strategy less obvious to competitors and for client confidentiality. Because Scale offshores its labelers to other countries, it faces another problem. As the company is increasingly expanding its US government footprint and focus on defense contracts, the government is unlikely to share classified data with foreign labelers. So what did it do? It had to open up US offices and employ US labelers. This obviously is more expensive. Is this sustainable? Only time will tell. 
Alex believes that quality data to create reliable AI outcomes requires human insight and guidance. Algorithms need data and data needs humans. Only humans can understand the context and nuance to properly annotate data to be fed to algorithms. They teach algorithms what to do. This is why teaching AI human intentions and values is so important. It's through this process that ensures AI will have fair, ethical outcomes in line with human values. It's this actual alignment that's very challenging to solve. I agree with his point of view here. This is the genesis for scale. But what happens when AI becomes smart enough to think for themselves? We're not there yet, but it could come sooner than we think. This is a very important question and concern that's top of mind for AI experts, policymakers, and the general public. In fact, tech leaders like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and even Sam Altman have raised concerns about AI being a top global threat that should be treated just as seriously as pandemic and nuclear war or risk humanity's extinction. Running a business is tough. For Alex, it seems like it's life or death, at least for the United States. He deeply believes in two things. First is that AI is a huge force for good. And second, America needs to continue to be in a leadership position. With growing threats from China and Russia, it's become very clear that technological advancements is how you come out on top. Remote tasks was a business decision to cut down on costs and keep his company afloat. While I don't necessarily agree with its poor working conditions and very low compensation for its workers, I don't disagree with Scale's decision to create this agency in the first place. Scale's exponential growth comes down to its ultimate purpose, which is to play a key role in maintaining America's AI supremacy. That's the end of the video. I'm Lauren from Darkman Digest, where I talk about the most exciting insights in the tech industry. So if you enjoy this content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.